Hello there. I'm Gary Edwards, your songwriting class instructor. We'll be talking about creating music and marketing music over an eight week period. And thank you for joining the class. Now the structure of the class is that week one we'll be talking about this introduction, which is this video. Week two we'll be talking about lyrics. Week three we'll be talking about writing music. On week four we'll be talking about working with other co-writers and collaborating. Week five, we'll be discussing legal matters concerning copyrights and contracts, royalties and payments and rights. And uh, by the way, I'm not a lawyer, so you need to contact a lawyer before you sign anything or do anything legal. Week six, we'll be talking about technical matters regarding uh, composing music, such as uh, WAV files, MP3 files, different types of computers. Week seven, we'll be discussing marketing. Now, I've tried most of the marketing tricks that I talked about. I feel like when you're writing music and marketing, you're like a fisherman. You're trying to different lures to see which works. When you find the lure that works the best, you tend to stick to that one. On week eight, I'll be talking about performance tips, things that I've learned after playing music since 1956. When I started playing professionally in presentation, uh, eye contact, and that sort of thing. A little bit about myself. My dad was a musician. He taught himself how to play saxophone and piano. And uh, one of my first and fondest memories is when I was five years old, uh, we were living in a relative's garage because we didn't have a permanent home. And I remember my father sitting down with a friend who knew how to write music and they were collaborating on some songs that my dad wrote. My dad actually presented one of his songs on TV and was disheartened by the results. So he more or less gave up composing at an early age. So my philosophy has always been work hard and persevere and keep trying and don't give up. My grandfather's name was Percy Edwards and he was a blacksmith in Spirit Lake, Idaho in the 1940s and he also played fiddle in the barn dances. I never heard him play but I remember seeing instruments in his closet. I started taking music lessons in the fifth grade in public schools. My first instrument was a trumpet. It didn't work out very good. My lips weren't strong enough to play the high notes. And so in the sixth grade, I switched to tuba, and I became a child prodigy on the tuba. I got to perform solos at basketball games eventually and enjoyed the instrument very much. The one thing about a career is that you try to find something to do that you're good at that not everybody else is good at. And I found my niche when I was playing the tuba. In the ninth grade, I started playing string bass in the school orchestra, and I also took up guitar. I had one lesson on the guitar, learned how to play a C chord, and the rest I taught myself. I taught myself how to play the guitar by buying sheet music, learning where to put my fingers on the guitar chord charts along with the music. And also, one time I was sick for a few days, I bought a circle of fifth chord chart and learned to find out from songs on the radio what key the songs were playing in and which chords fit that key. Eventually, I majored in music education and got a degree from Indiana University. I played in the Spokane Symphony Orchestra when I was still in high school, and I also played in the second uh, rock and roll band in 1960 for a couple of years in Spokane, Washington. We traveled all over the Northwest, and I made more money playing in one night than my college friends made washing dishes five days a week. After I graduated from college, I taught music in the public schools. I got the job teaching music after an interview, and then uh, I went down and auditioned for the Louisville Symphony in November of 1963. And after I finished my audition, the concertmaster and the conductor said they would go downstairs and talk together for a minute. The audition didn't go too well because I was using a borrowed string bass. The tuning pegs kept slipping and I kept going out of tune and having to retune. So then uh, when the conductor and the concertmaster returned, Charles Whitney told me that they just learned while they were gone that President Kennedy had been shot and assassinated. They also told me that I got the job, so it was a bittersweet audition. As I drove back to Indiana. I pondered over what was important in life and later on decided that helping to change the world was more important and helping other people was more important and learning to understand myself and others was more important. So I began a 40-year career as a social worker, primarily working in child protection investigations. But my love all this time was music and that was my first passion and I always played music on the weekends. And when I was 31 years old, I started writing music and I've written pop, rock, country, classical. I've written several musicals and an opera, children's musicals and many other pieces of music, hundreds of pieces of music. And in fact, 
I've gotten enough motivation through the public performances of my works that keeps me going. Writing music is something like a blessing and sometimes like a curse. It's almost like an addiction, but it's a positive addiction. It, keep, it kept me out of trouble during the high school years, it kept me busy and occupied in doing some positive activities, and it also introduced me to experiences and people that I would never have met otherwise, all the way from Chile in South America to the barrios of uh, southern Idaho where I met several Tex-Mex and worked with them. And then also in California, where I met the people they call Chicanos, the California Spanish-speaking people. So I did learn a foreign language in Chile, and that has helped me greatly over the years in both music and my other career. I recommend you learn another language as a fallback position while you're young and able to benefit from it. Now, I write music because I have to. It's like breathing, it's like my heart beating. If I quit writing music, who knows what would happen. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and a tune is running through my head and I've learned that I have to write it down immediately or I'll lose it. I'll just give you several other tips like that as I go along talking about music. The power of music. Music is powerful psychologically. Uh, music can help people fall in love as they're courting each other. Or music can harm people because they've learned that when they've played sad music, the number of suicides actually go up. So music can affect people and has a powerful impact and you have to be careful when you're writing music to understand the psychological effects that it might have on your listener. For instance, I write secular music about uh, topics like delinquent children or whatever. Although I don't sermonize in my music, which is probably not a good idea, I do include messages that indicate that there are consequences for your behavior. Do you have what it takes to write music? Uh, number one, you have to have a gift. It's something probably that you're born with, but it gets better as you use it. Yeah. And it becomes a mental exercise. And to me, it, each song becomes better and easier to write than the one before. I've heard other composers say the opposite, that each song is an effort in itself. But you have to be sort of a genius. What is the definition of a genius? To me, a genius is someone who has a childlike mind that is open to any ideas uh, before rejecting whichever ideas don't quite work out. So you're like brainstorming in your mind and you're listing all the possibilities before you decide whether they're good or not. And then at the end you pick out the two or three best ideas and focus on those until they're accomplished. So you have to be focused. If I'm working on multiple projects, I get nothing done. I have to just decide that this is the one project that I need to work on and I focus on it until it gets done and then I go on to the next project. You decide to write a note, and then you decide the length of the note, and then the pitch of the note, and then you have to decide quickly what the next note is gonna be that follows and what the parameters of that note are, and on and on until you actually finish the melody. Sometimes I do have a preconceived notion of the melody because of uh, a dream or something that pops into my head, but oftentimes I'll create a melody just from scratch, just by starting off with one note in one instrument, creating new notes that follow in a logical order. The definition of music is organized noise, and music consists of melody, rhythm, and harmony. I'll get into that more later on. Also, as I alluded to earlier, it helps to have a day job and enough money to pay for your music while you're getting established. They say it takes 10,000 hours of work before you become a, actually a proficient and accomplished uh, person with a career. So keep that in mind. Most people aren't like the lady that wrote the uh, song, Wide Open Spaces for the Dixie Chicks. That was her first song that she ever wrote. She was young and she had friends who had formed a group called the Dixie Chicks. She probably made enough money to live on the rest of her life without ever working if she chooses not to. That was the lucky one. Usually it takes hard work and perseverance as well as luck. The odds of making a hit song are very slim. Let's say there are 3,000 songs released every week. Out of those, maybe 100 reach the top 100 and might produce some income for the composer. So you can see that the odds are probably better than winning the lottery. A lot of times luck has something to do with it, being in the right place and at the right time and networking with the right people, making the right friends has a lot to do with success. I've learned over the years that you can be quite accomplished, quite proficient. People basically don't give a crap unless you're good at marketing. And marketing means networking and having a personality that makes people like you and want to work with you. Here's the format of the class. Each week I'll present a new topic and I'll discuss it, the ins and outs at length. In my live classes, I have people critique 
each other's lyrics and each other's melodies. Uh, we can't do that with this video class. You can contact me by email at gedward at roadrunner.com. G-E-D-W-A-R-D at R-O-A-D-R-U-N-N-E-R.com. I believe in the harsh critique. I used to write magazine articles, and when I went to a writer's group, they were the type of critiquers that would give me the kind of critique that an editor or a publisher would give me. I look forward to the kind of critiques where an editor or a publisher might include if they were inclined to in a rejection letter that help you actually learn what you're doing that doesn't work and what you should be doing to make your work better. Within a month of uh, belonging to this critique group that practiced the harsh critique, I call them sharks, I actually got my first articles published in magazines and made $15,000 over the next three year period writing articles about computers and doing reviews for software. In one of my episodes, I talk about equipment. So I go into the different brands of computers, the different brands of software, uh, discuss the basic elements of computer language, including bits, bytes, megahertz, terabytes, and technical aspects such as that. So that this will help you if you're at a party and you want to play a trivia game where you can stump your fellow guests. When I write music, I use Finale 26.1, and then when I'm ready to record, I export a MIDI file, and I'll explain that in that week about technical aspects. And my sound engineer ex imports my MIDI file into Pro Tools, which gives him a much more sounds available to create the kind of music that we want to sound and make it sound more like a human background tape than a computerized background tape. There's a free piece of software included with Macintosh computers called GarageBands. I know people that actually produce commercials using GarageBand. For sound design, I use a software called Adobe Audition. I've tried free software, I've tried shareware, and I've found that in the long run it's more expensive, but it's actually, you're better off using the industry standard software rather than some cheap free shareware that ends up wasting time and costing you a lot of money to upgrade and so on. It's not that hard to learn music theory. You could probably learn in a couple of weeks and there's software programs that I'll explain that can help you learn how to read and write music. So if you can do everything as much as possible on your own, you're better off than having to rely on a songwriting partner. I'll get more into that later on when I talk about collaboration. There's software that you can use to learn to read and write music, and that is Alfred Essentials of Music Theory 3.0 and the Interactive Musician on both PC and Mac, Practica Musica, and Music Lessons is the name of another software program for learning how to read and write music. There are two textbooks that I use personally. One is called All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald S. Passman, and this is upgraded periodically. And then another book that I use frequently is called The Study of Orchestration by Samuel Adler. Another book that you might want to check out is The Songwriter's Market. This lists publishers and record companies, etc., that might want to use your music. I've gotten 36 publishing contracts as a result of these types of contacts, and uh, as a result, I made $3, but you can try it if you like. I'm going to talk to you about writer's block. Basically, my theory is that it takes years of lifetime experience to get the life experience that you need to know how to experience the emotions that you're going to put in your music. Now there's exceptions. Taylor Swift seems to do a good job. Uh, when she was very young, she would uh, date a guy and then she would break up and then she would write a song about it and make millions. Most of us aren't Taylor Swift, but she does have a genius for marketing as, and as well as the music talent. Myself personally, I call myself a singer. I would call myself an entertainer. So I get by on my personality, which is why sometimes I'm starving. But actually, personality does have a lot of effect on your music performance and help people relate to you as opposed to somebody who might be more proficient but doesn't establish eye contact or connection with the audience. And more about that later. Another way to overcome writer's block is to learn how to make music on different instruments. I've written music on a kazoo. I've written music by humming or whistling. I've written music by tinkling on the piano, and sometimes I'm inspired by tinkling on the guitar, or sometimes I just start writing music with my Finale software and see where it takes me. But the point is, if you find yourself getting stuck and unable to think of new compositions, try a different approach to it, and that might spark and trigger a whole new hit song for you. Another thing that I've used to overcome writer's block is that I kept a journal for many years after I first got married, at least 25 years. So I have a diary of experiences that I can call upon to inspire me to create music. For instance, I wrote a song called Soulmates, dedicated to my wife for Valentine's Day in the year 2011.
Also, I've written sad songs such as You'll Be Sorry. Another source of inspiration to overcome writer's block is to work with another composer. There's advantages and disadvantages to this, but I'll get more into that later on. But it will spark creativity. And I've worked with people that I didn't even care for personally, but we worked together and created a new project that was successful. But it does help if you get along well with the person that you're collaborating with. Another technique I use to overcome writer's block is to write in different genres. I might write a country song one week, a rock song another week, a concerto for string bass another week, and whatever. It just keeps me from being bored if, and I don't have to write the same type of music all the time. I've written Spanish-inspired songs, songs inspired by my working with a soul band for two years. When you write a musical, you're also able to write music in any style, any genre. Another technique to overcome writer's block is to set aside a specific time of the day or the week, and you'll find that the anticipation of that writing time is going to be helpful. I find that it helps to brainstorm different themes and to write down different ideas. You can get inspiration from reading books, newspapers, TV shows, magazine articles, daily contacts with your friends. Sometimes when I'm sitting around and joking with my friends, afterwards I'll write down on my cell phone some of the uh, jokes that we talked about and you actually use those in a musical later on that I write. Uh, I started going to karaoke and I spent two years at a karaoke bar in particular and I was inspired by the different people there to write about those characters. So research, uh, getting out in the world. If you're stuck at home in your basement and you're in your cave all the time, I find that that blocks creativity. It helps me to network and to get out and go to meetings and have coffee with other people, meet other kinds of people, not just the same kind of people that have the same interests that I do. For instance, I wrote a short story about bull riding. It helps me to set a deadline so that I need to finish a project by a certain time. I work best under pressure, so this is a technique that I use to overcome writer's block. Other techniques that I've used, including taking a class on songwriting or music composition. I've started a couple of songwriters groups. I also got interested in writing for film and became an intern at a local TV station where I learned about shooting, editing, composing, directing, producing, writing. The more skills that you have, the more freedom you have to answer yes when somebody calls you up and say, can you do this or can you do that? So always constantly be learning and this greatly increases your chance of success. So for other sources of information, you can go to Google and type in a search for certain keywords. For example, songwriting books. First time I typed this into Google, I got over 392,000 results. There's a website called http colon slash slash www.addicted hyphen to hyphen songwriting dot com right slash you can find books on songwriting in the library or at your local bookstore you can do searches on youtube to hear what other people are doing or join facebook groups basically uh, when i'm in a composition mode i usually don't listen to other people's music because i don't want to subconsciously plagiarize somebody else's work so be careful that you don't copy somebody else's work either inadvertently or on purpose that can get you in a lot of trouble and cost you a lot of money well, folks, I hope that's been helpful to you and that you learned something from this first session. Send me your feedback to gedward at roadrunner.com and visit my website at www.edwardsmusicsite.com. I'll see you next week. Bye.